this guy, take this by the handles and point it directly at me. We're gonna wait for this Uber to pass so I can step into the street. Okay. <laughs> Watch them stop directly behind me. That would be fantastic. All right, perfect. You guys all see me in there? Yep. Purple yeah. stick man? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is an SLS camera. So this is a depth perception camera. Um, so a couple of things about this. I only bring this out with groups of 10, uh, simply because I think it's beeping, it's driving me crazy. I guess it turned off. Um, so it should be, it's a, gonna pick up on anything that's in front of something else. So it could be a sign in front of a building, it could be a car, and just try to put the outline of the car on there. I, right now, I'm in front of the building, so it's gonna pick up on me first. If I move out of frame, it might pick up on the bicycle and the vehicle over there, because it's in front of a building. Um, so I do a lot of screenshots with this just because I screenshot it and brighten it up if I have a figure in there that I'm unsure of to make sure that it's not going to be any shit in the background um, and, and a tree or so forth and so on because it will get a little bit dark. So I'll brighten it. If I find something, you'll have both screenshots. Um, I want to point out something else. Did I have three points for my face? Is it still on there? The reason yeah. being is I have two eyes and a nose. That's yeah. the depths of my face. That's how sensitive this camera is. Sensitivity is actually turned way down so we don't pick up every leaf that's on the ground. Um, but again, because all these are in front of another leaf. Uh, but that's the first thing that I look for when I'm, I might actually have a figure nearby is at three points for a head. Uh, so you guys are getting the point on this one. Um, so trees and bushes are not going to be your friend. So if you're pointing it at and you see like a ghost on the, it's not a ghost. It's all the leaves that it's picking up on. Um, so go ahead and hit the stop button. There's only one button on there. We're from the Citadel, if they were old enough to drink or not. One night two guys came in and they weren't old enough to drink. So John had the bartender throw their asses out of there. And they looked pretty pissed off the next night and they tried to steal the cash register from the front of the bar. I'll wait till they get out of their car and shut the door. It's loud. It's kind of a fitting song. <laughs> and we're good. So, the gentleman came back and stole the cash register. John saw what was going on from the back. He slammed down his beer the way a linebacker does. Goes up front and starts pounding on these guys, just beating the hell out of them. A couple of gunshots go off during that bar fight. John got grazed in the neck, but it goes past him and into the wall. He was the only one that got shot. He's the only one that got up. He goes back to the bar, tells the bartender, get me another beer, go get those two guys in the ambulance. Irony of the story, nobody died. If I tell you a building is haunted, you are preconditioned to think that some tragic death occurred here and that is not the case going on here is the bullet hole it's allegedly still here even if it's not and they filled it in that means they basically sealed big john's blood inside the front of the building people that sit in the front of the bar tend to get a little queasy nauseous headache also whenever the times that i have been in there which has been very few even though i've been starting at this location for five years um, the only emf i ever get out of the place i can't determine where it's coming from and it's always in the front of the bar no wiring or anything like that behind it back to the reason why we're here it's a heated warning to the 10 strangers standing in front of me I don't know how this is going to affect any of you. Any of you get those symptoms, headache, nausea, dizziness, let me know immediately and we'll remove ourselves from the area, but we will blame the weather first. Not everything is going to be a ghost with me. I will be your biggest skeptic and debunk a lot of things for you. So is that fair for everybody? Yeah, absolutely. Fair as much. All right, let's get your mind off your own health, right? So, because some of you looked at me like, what the hell did we sign up for? Um, <laughs> big earthquake here in 1886. If you didn't already know that from any other tour in Charleston, now you know, we're all gonna talk about it. It's weird, we're in South Carolina. We're not supposed to get earthquakes, we get hurricanes here. The building, Big John's, is allegedly where the first death occurred from that big earthquake of 1886. Wow. So a piece of the white mantle broke off, hit somebody in the back of the head, killed them. Previous owner of this bar, in between the two different Big John renovations, used to see dark shadows in the middle of East Bay Street after closing. Take notice that I did say allegedly a lot with that story. I have no proof whatsoever. It's just a great segue, so none of you are worried about getting sick while we're out and about, even though I just brought it back up again. <laughs> yes, that was a joke, thank you. All right, so, you guys ready to learn more about the gear? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna go this way. Horses, but it's also the same place where we used to keep horses that delivered milk and eggs to the residents of Charleston. 1860s to 1920s. So that's it. That's the history. Keywords here would be delivery, milk, eggs, right? Anything relative to a stable. So let's talk about all these communicators. So we have that word list and we got three spirit boxes out here. What's the first question you guys would ask if you were sitting in front of a Ouija board? Is anyone here? Who said it? Perfect. So, uh, wow, not you. Tell someone they want to be here. Awesome. Right. <laughs> Sorry, you said you were dragging along. Um, so, So we're going to go with that question. Now, let's say we all stood around and I said, is anybody here? Just like they do on TV. And Mandy, here's the answer, no. That means somebody's here. You guys getting my point? We're not using yes, no questions. We're going after details. That's why you came here. That's what we're going to go after. Perfect. 
Okay. So, with that said, I, when I'm teaching people how to use these devices, you ask questions you kind of already know the answer to. I'm going to give you a very blatant example. Here, just be mindful of the vehicles in here. We're working with about 12 vehicles in here. Sorry, I did a quick scope as we walk through here. Um, when we separate, is how this location will work is I'll give you the history and then we're going to separate and I'll do about one or two round robins with everybody to kind of see what's going on with your devices and then we will regroup so I can give you the answers and show you how it all pieces together if we have anything at all. Okay. Um, so that's how this location will go. Every location is going to be a little bit different from the next based on what type of house we're dealing with. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put you back on mute. You'll be able to unmute as soon as we're done with the history because again, my ears are already gone. We're gone. We're gone there. Um, so with that said, welcome to a parking lot. Congratulations. It's a big old smelly place with a giant dumpster in the back. I told you I'd take you guys to weird spots. Here's what goes on here. This is actually relevant to the history of Carlton and we use it as a parking lot. So it's kind of a sad story. But this used to be, oh, let me stop there. Spirit box people. This is where I start withholding information on purpose. I will not give you questions here like what color was George Washington's white horse, okay? Just like what we did over there with the big red barn. You'll get the answers from your communicators. Is that fair? Again, I don't want to put everything in your brain. This used to be the Eliza and Charles Pinkney Mansion. We're standing right where the mansion was, right here in the front of the space. Eliza's garden was lined up with Five Church Restaurant and came all the way across. And then the servant and slave quarters were in the back of the area. Uh, so it kind of gives you a big layout of what actually was here. So, who the heck were these people? Charles and Eliza had a son named Charles. They had a nephew named Charles. That's three Chucks, in case you weren't paying attention. That's why we look for secondary clues. In the event that the name Charles shows up, I need to know which one it is by a secondary clue so I know how to address them. So, the son and the nephew were signers of the Constitution for South Carolina. That's a big deal for us, but I hate politics, especially when we're only 10 days away from an election. Right, so um, let's kind of move on. If I don't give the gentleman that recognition though, they're gonna do it for me in a nasty manner through the spirit boxes. So I just give it to him, we move on. Eliza, the mom. Eliza married Charles at a young age according to today's standards. I say it that way because if you're going to ask her how old she was when she married Charles, don't expect numbers from when young ladies from colonial times. They got married at like 12 and 14 back then. Think of today's standards because the husband was over double her age when they married. Kind of a creepy age gap back then, kind of a creepy age gap now. I'll just put that out there. It's my opinion. Take it for what it's worth. We'll talk about it later. Um, moving on. She married him because her father was over in England. He thinks he's dying. He wants all of his kids home so he can see him one last time. Eliza didn't think he was dying, so she stayed put right here and got married. It's 1744. You do not get married in that particular year to earn a green card. We are not a country yet. So she did marry him out of love. It should pop up right this time. Um, so this is, there's nothing horrific about this space. It is actually a place of respect. You'll see that in just a moment. Moving on. She was correct. Dad didn't die right away. And instead, he starts sending her gifts apologetically. And one of those gifts happened to be the plant seeds of indigo. That's a plant that makes blue dye that makes your blue jeans blue. So that's what we use it for today. When she got those seeds, no idea what to do with it. She had to learn from her servants and slaves how to keep it going. It's not always hot here. I don't know where everybody's from, but it's not always like this is comfortable for us. Uh, but anyway, then she learned how to make the dye, moved it to a cash drop, got a hold of dad, and told him that the rice plantations were going downhill in price. They were going to make a killing with the indigo. She was right. Because now we have an international businesswoman during colonial times. So, absolutely cool stuff. That's the boring business stuff, though. Let's get into the weird shit, because that's why you guys showed up. Um, so, what's going to happen is I'm going to try to control the environment as much as I can, only because it is a place of respect. Um, I am going to hand out questions based off of what type of communicators that you guys have. You can cherry pick off of each other's questions, I don't care, but if you do go rogue and ask your own questions, three small rules. No yes, no's, we've discussed that already. Be respectful, I've already mentioned that twice already, and do not ask about Eliza's children. 
I will kind of reveal why before we leave the space. It's only because our modern day language will unintentionally poke the bear and all activity will stop, including the EMF readings that we've already gotten. Um, they will not go any higher. They'll pretty much stay at zero. I've seen it dozens of times, so just be respectful. So let's kind of go around the horn and I'm gonna assign the questions. And just remember, your answers can go anywhere to any of the other devices. The only people that don't have communicators at this point um, is going to be Anchor, Anchor, am I saying? Encore. Encore. Um, and Jeff. So those are the only two. They're, they're just kind of gauging where the ghost might actually be. Um, so for sure, with yours and shit, uh, you're gonna focus on the uh, mansion. It's not here, right? We're standing where it would have stood. What happened to it? You're gonna find that out. And if we get the what, we will often get two or three numbers from the exact date of when that tragedy occurred. There's a clue. It's a tragedy. Um, so with yours, you're gonna be focused on Eliza's maiden name. The reason why um, is because she's the second wife named Eliza from Charles back to back. The first wife, also named Eliza, has a maiden name that starts with the same letter as the one I just told you about, the letter L. So just kind of keep that in mind. Obviously, you might be picking up on other things. We're going to keep your questions nice and simple. Uh, next beer box, we're going to go to uh, Mandy and Elena. You're going to have the same set of questions, um, just because yours gives us a lot, and it's going to be much easier to grab those type of answers. You're both going to be focused on her death. The four major questions that we get answers to, age at time of death, how she died, where she's buried, which president was a pallbearer at her funeral. So age, how, where, president is the easiest way to remember that. Um, so yeah, age, how, where, president. And again, just if it's relative to her death, just by all means, ask the question, just be respectful while you do it. I'm just telling you what we commonly see the answers out of. Age, how, where, president. So I gotta come up with the questions of my own. No, I just give them to you. Well, like, I just have to. How old were you when you passed away? Oh, okay. Simple as that. Um, so, um, I don't think I need to keep anybody else behind at this point. All cameras should be going at this point. So, again, just do not go near the cars. I know it kind of limits our space. Some of you might want to stay up here um, and we kind of migrate. And again, I'll kind of watch to see what we're going. Did we get any other numbers, Jeff? Jump it all over the place. How high did it go? The next highest one was a 17, I believe. I'll take a 17. That's still pretty good. The average for this space is about 18 to 22. So we're right in what I normally see out of the space. Um, so what about yours? Anything? No. Nothing. So it's totally weird, isn't it? Like how he's getting readings and you're not? Yeah. yeah they're not rigged. So I just walk around. Yep. Just walk around. Stay away from cars. Let's do it. You guys. Do you want to stay with me? Yeah. Oh. Oh, I think it's hitting on the. Do you hear anything? I wonder how close you have to be. Oh, that's my finger. Shadow.
puzzle. Nice easy job, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have you heard anything? So sign. Yep. Um, I just see you. I just see you, Dad. Oh. Wait, come here. Oh, I think it's the sign. Are you recording? Yeah. Well, right in here, I keep getting 30. No, see, it's, it's just on the sign. I think it's just the dots on the sign. Oh. See? Look. <laughs> I think it's just the sign. Not no, because it's just on there. That's how it was on the fence over there. Okay. That's crazy. It's kind of funny. It looks like the sign is dancing though. those poor people. Any numbers? A lot cooler uh, than scary, thankfully. I'm glad I don't have to ask questions. Anything else? I don't know if this records sound or not, but 
I don't know how to make this not blurry. Oh, what is that? Oh, everybody's over there. Oh, everybody's over there. You couldn't make out like what it was or debunk it right away? No. Okay. Are we still recording? Um, he didn't tell me something, so I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm assuming it's like. You can always tell, like, that's why I'm like, I'm just gonna call it. Cool. Alright, cameras, go ahead and put a stop to them. Oh. Um, so, I'm just gonna point your cameras outward because, again, we don't want just footage of our lights. Um, this is gonna be the great thing. If another tour or any other tourist comes in through us, we'll just split the seas like what we just did, let them pass through. I stopped talking because I do talk about how I got in trouble with certain places here and I try to keep that under wraps. Um, but we'll let them go through and we'll continue on. Um, and then at the next location, I'll explain what we're going to be doing with uh, Meg's camera once we get over there because the next one will be a focus for that. Um, gentlemen, with your EMF meters, your baseline here is an 8. We're not going to start at a 2.5 because we have some lamp posts near us. It's going to give off up to a 7. Uh, you come to these places a few hundred times a year, you get to know them pretty well. Um, so this is Philadelphia Alley. Every ghost tour comes down here. Every ghost tour. Does anybody know how many ghost tours in Charleston? <laughs> That's not a number. <laughs> anybody want to take a guess? 324. Wow, you guys are way off. 338. Wow. And you guys found me. Sold out. How about that? Um, so, uh, but we all come down here. And I was going to take us out of my route, like I said, but this guy follows me. So I decided to keep his origin story alive. Let's just keep it going. And probably the reason why he follows me is because I have the gizmos and gadgets to be able to talk back. We can hear him communicating. These other guys are just telling a story and moving on. So this used to be called Duelers Alley. This is where some of the duels used to occur for the city of Charleston. I say some of the duels because it was illegal in the 1700s and they had to find hiding spots. This just happened to be one of those hiding spots. So we're all telling the same story. I'm just going to give you a few extra details because you guys are ghost hunting. You're not on a campfire marshmallow kind of ghost tour. I did not just point at that other tour, I promise you. Um, so <laughs> that's why we don't film our circle. Um, but <laughs> did I say that out loud? Holy shit, I did. Um, but anyway, moving on. Um, so here's the story. A doctor moves down here from Rhode Island. Who heard, it was it diagnosis and treatment? Yeah. So again, subtle clues, we'll see what else we get with it. Um, but the doctor's name is Dr. Joseph Brown Ladd. So in these events that I'm listening to the spot check of the um, Mandy's recording and the song Brown Eyed Girl shows up while we're here, it's not a coincidence, we get it all the time. It's part of his name. Um, so anyway, Doc moves here because he's supposed to get married to his fiance, Amanda. Amanda just inherited a lot of money from her dead parents. And she has an attorney helping her out with all of the cash flow that she just got. A lot of money. So the attorney thinks that Dr. Ladd is just after Amanda's cash, so he tells Amanda, get rid of that doctor fellow. So he comes down here to Charleston to prove that he's not after her money. Uh, he's going to start his medical practice down here. So we're going to let these folks pass through us. Again, we'll just kind of split the seas. Yeah, so you see that make right to the So where was I? Oh, he moves here. He's getting married. And it, oh, yeah. He comes here and starts medical practice. So, yeah. Comes into town. Hi, guys. Hello. On this guy's way into town, he actually had a coachman. His coachman set him up to be robbed and killed. It's like having a really bad Uber driver in today's world. So sorry for those of you that are taking an Uber back. I just put that in your brain. Um, but anyway. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> bad jokes. Um, it's a good thing I get, like, you guys that actually understand my humor. Because sometimes I get groups that are just like, wow, this guy's just not funny. Eh? Oh, he's laughing at his own shit. What the hell's happening right now? It's supposed to be a ghost hunt. And he's laughing. Um, but anyway, so somebody was walking by and seeing what was about to happen to the newcomer. And the person walking by was named Ralph Isaacs. Do those initials sound familiar to anything else I may have said here? Rhode Island. Rhode Island. Good job, man. Um, so we were actually getting the letters R-I from a regular spirit box. Like somebody was spelling out something like Victorious that has R-I next to it. And I was like, oh, what's that relevant to? The doctor or Ralph? So I bought another device, and it acts like a digital Ouija board. Um, and it gives us letters whenever there's an EMF spike. Um, that device broke last week because I 
beat the hell out of it apparently and it gets bounced around the bag so I, I got a new one on order you gotta wait for the insurance on that one we actually kind of fuck oh and that device it's only this big and it's a custom made product it's about four hundred dollars in case you were wondering um so yeah um uh, i always wait for the insurance money for the comeback when this stuff breaks um but i was actually the one that broke it but we'll talk about that later on um yeah it's it had like a malfunction so i went in like i broke it apart and tried to like rewire it and apparently cut the wrong wire like i was on, like on mission impossible and uh yeah now it doesn't work at all uh, it doesn't even turn on so yeah i was a jerk so now i gotta prove that i didn't break it anyway now that we recorded everything super great let's move on um so ralph tells the doctor hey dude i know this guy he's gonna try to kill you the coachman why don't you come with me? I got friends at 59 Church Street. I know somebody heard the number 59 at the last location. It's a little too far away for it to be relevant to where we are. Um, but he says, I got friends there. They'll rent you a room. You'll be safe and good to go. Doc took him up on the offer. Now the gentlemen are friends. And basically, he, Dr. Ladd's doing pretty well for himself after a few months, maybe a year. Um, and his medical practice is doing great. Amanda gets wind of this, and she's moving down from Rhode Island so they could be married. Dr. Ladd then became known as the Whistling Doctor. This is the reason I was going to take this out of my route. I hate cliches. Every haunted city you will ever visit is going to have a cliched wh whistling ghost. We all have one. This one just happens to be a doctor. There is some validity to this guy, though. Um, I actually caught quite a few whistles while we've been down here before. Moving forward. So why am I telling you this while we're in Jeweler's Alley? There's got to be a fight somewhere. Dr. Ladd and Ralph go see plays together. They can't sit next to each other because the doctor makes more money. That's the hierarchy of Charleston. He gets better seats. So on their way home from seeing Richard III one night, they're arguing over the new actress they just saw. Dr. Ladd thought she was great. Ralph didn't. The argument turns into Ralph insulting the doctor's fiance, Amanda, back home in Rhode Island. It got really ugly between the two of them and they went their separate ways. But Ralph the next day went to his friends at the newspaper and he tells, basically places an ad and tells the whole city of Charleston what he thinks of the doctor. Kind of a, you're a disgrace to society kind of stuff. Um, so Doc saw this ad and rebuttaled with, let's go to Jeweler's Alley. We're gonna settle this. Somebody's gonna die. Keep in mind, this argument started over an actress and shit was really dumb back in the 1700s mm -hmm. when it came to killing people. Anyway, the gentleman came down here back to back. They took her 10 paces. They turned, Doc pointed his gun in the air and shot his one shot. He didn't want to kill his friend. He just needed the courage to show up and prove his point, willing to forgive. Ralph, however, still has his one bullet. He puts it in the kneecap on the doctor. Doc didn't die, but obviously fell to the ground because it's in his knee. His friends picked him up, took him home to 59 Church Street. He died 10 days later, November 2nd of 1786. So she's got the ivy wall with the leaves in there, so it might be picking up on that. I'm still gonna, I'd seen it too, so I already kind of had a mental note. <laughs> I love how you just kind of jumped in there. Um, but anything with leaves, I always kind of like double check. What in the world? We got flashing lights? <laughs> it's supposed to be whistles. Um, I thought this was a ghost tour. There's aliens. <laughs> There's aliens. <laughs> it's funny. They're coming to get us. Um, but at the same time, so with the... Uh, the duel, you guys get the point. Like, there's, there's a whole lot going on with this, and there's a lot of different clues that we're going to get from either this location or while we're over at the next location and our very last location as well, because the house of 59 Church Street will be right around the corner. Um, so, again, we'll always be a place of raised emotion for him as we're kind of going through this. So, if you're going to try this on your own, um, which, by the way, all the ghost tours tell their people to listen for the whistles while they're here. We have three cameras running plus a voice recorder. If we're going to get a disembodied whistle, it's going to show up on one of those four devices. I can't tell you, though, how many times I've actually gone through the spot check of that spirit box recording, and I get the whistling part of a song and then the word doctor immediately after. It happens dozens upon dozens of times. I don't look for it. By the way, when I do the spot check, it's minute one, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. I'm not looking for anything in between. If it's a little bit off, it's because the timer moves. Um, so again, you guys will see the point when you guys get your report back. But try this on your own with your voice recorders because I can't take you all the way through. Like I said, I've been kicked out of here. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. If you find something in the background in your voice recorders as you walk all the way through, just remember, every local knows this story. Anybody walking up and down Cumberland or at Queen Street, we all throw a whistle down the alley. It's just something we do here. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, it's a funny little thing, but it is just a, even when I drive past this alley, I still, I always throw a whistle down just to give a head nod to Dr. Ladd. So, Here's how I got booted out. You guys ready for the fun part of the story? Yeah, I got to see all smiles now. Um, so um, this alley didn't go all the way through the way we came in. There used to be a wall halfway between where we're standing, which is why I had us moved down, between us and Cumberland Street. And the reason why is because this is where they kept the livestock for the city of Charleston. This is before Duelers Alley, so we're going further back in time. This was called Cow Alley. So this, they had to kind of keep them herded in. Uh, the reason why I'm telling you this is because they basically started at Queen Street and worked their way this way over time and it had several different names. But the word cow and, and anything dealing with like produce and meat and things like that will show up on our spirit boxes. But anyway, those bricks down at the end were there first before the ones we're standing on. Those are sun-dried bricks from slave children. There's a full handprint from a slave child down there in one of those bricks. You can see it. 
and then her fingerprints wipes in others. You can really point them out because they're very distinct. You can probably make out little subtleties on these ones up here, but those ones down there, very prominent. They're worn down. Um, I used to take my group all the way down there for a history lesson. There's nothing paranormal about that handprint. I already told you how I feel about cemeteries. That kid is not staring at that handprint in the afterlife. He's not there. November 26th of 2020, I took my entire group, same size as you guys, group of 10, and they're all huddled around the damn brick waiting for something to happen with the devices I handed out. I know nothing's gonna happen. He's not there. I'm trying to shoo them along because I'm also trying to be respectful. We're, staying, we're right outside the dining room window of the beautiful mansion at the end of the alley, where the new owner of that mansion came out screaming his head off at me. My daughter was on the tour that night. She's about 14 years old and thought it was hysterical that dad was getting yelled at. She was all about it. Um, so we just moved on. The next day was Thanksgiving. I don't tour on holidays because, especially Thanksgiving, because I used to work in upper management for Walmart. You guys fight over towels on Thanksgiving at Walmart and scarred me for life. I don't do holidays anymore. I own this business. I can do whatever the hell I want. No holidays. The next day, I called my partner that brought me into tourism and I told him what happened so I could figure out what to do next. And I'm like freaking out because I'm new at this. And he laughed at me just like my daughter did. He already got the complaint. He said, you got to reroute your group. So I told my group that night, and it's Black Friday, so I'm sold out again. So it's 10 people. I told him, I don't believe in the next story, guys. I've never had anything happen over there, but we got to reroute. And I'm into vampires, not pirates. I would normally tell you a pirate story next, but I've been kicked out of there too. Um, so before we left the space, if I tell you that, by the way, if we're going to be investigating pirates, what's the first real pirate that you would think of? Blackbeard. 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 What, do you, what name do you think these people heard on a spirit box before we left? No. Uh, Anne. As in Anne Bonny, the famous female pirate, which is who we are about to go investigate. So they had no inkling of thought that it was going to be a female pirate, let alone Anne Bonny herself. So I took him around the corner, told him what I knew about piracy. Not much, by the way, because I only had one day to research, a few hours. And somebody else with a spirit box heard the number 300. I didn't know what it meant. I wrote it down. I do the research. We were there on November 28th of 2020. Anne Bonny's trial for piracy was November 28th of 1720. We were there on the exact 300th anniversary of her pirate trial. So I usually get the wows, and that's really cool stuff. I was pretty pissed off. Let me explain. So I have a master's degree in creative writing and all of my other bachelor degrees are also in writing of some sort. I need facts and data when I do research, especially for paranormal activity. With that said, pirate stories come from pirate lore, which were written a hundred years after the days of Blackbeard and Anne Bonny. That's a problem. So if you guys found something that might be relevant, I had to read like five textbooks to try to figure it out. My, half my library right now is all books on pirates. I've watched more documentaries, read more books, and played more video games based on piracy to find the common denominators for everything to see how true things can actually be, and now I can't even tell you the story. So, here's what's going to happen next. Anything weird going on with your devices before I explain the next phase? Okay. Um, no readings whatsoever, gentlemen? No. Okay. Um, what are the last two words? Out. Last. And then when you whistled after that immediately, it said quiet. Weird. A lot of times we'll get the word listener on here uh, with this particular location. Um, so the next location, I'm actually going to do a battery and light swap um, out of Meg's camera, and we're going to be looking for an apparition. Um, so, yeah, very interesting piece. Um, so when I got kicked out of the Anne Bonny bit, I had to like try to find something very quick. So I went to a story that is commonly told, and I don't like the story because it is cursed. So we're gonna be working with the story to replace the story that I replaced with. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Perfect, it didn't make any sense to me in my brain, but if you guys got it, you guys got the point. Um, so we're gonna be working with that story, but we'll go, before we actually go up to that cemetery, we're gonna stop just before it, because other tours like to stop up further close to the cemetery. We'll do the light swap, I'll tell you the story, then we'll go up and take our turn. We'll get about 10 minutes worth of footage, and I do want all three cameras pointing the exact same way that Megan's is going to be pointed, simply because if something happens on her camera, I wanna know how the other two react. Um, so it's a very interesting tale. So I have a question. Yeah. So we were seeing something, now we are not. So does that mean anything or no? So on her particular camera, because she is shooting at the ivy wall, which is all covered in leaves, it's, the leaves are all in front of one another. So um, it has the possibility of it just being the leaves. So go ahead and oh, point okay. your camera towards you, so that way they don't know you're recording. Mm -hmm. Opposite way, opposite way. So, um, but as far as that's concerned, I'm going to take a few screenshots and kind of see what's going on in there. And okay. more than likely, it's going to be the ivy. Okay. Um, but I always, you know, take screenshots. That one there takes me the longest to go through because it is a lot of screenshotting. And then I have to brighten it up and kind of see where things fell and see how it's moving. Now, if it was in the middle of the, 
you know, obviously be in the middle of the alley without those people down there. Um, we would try to get them to wave at us, so that way it's a, a direct reaction. And that's where I put my stamp of approval on it. So if we see something on there, and I'm like, hey, if you're Dr. Ladd, can you wave your right hand for us and do a little demonstration? So if you get somebody to do a demonstration for you, obviously that's that's a great moment. Like those are the types of pieces that I've caught with that in the past. But again, that one there is probably like two to four pieces per year um, mm -hmm. that I get out of it. But the, I use that for a lot of debunking for things from the other cameras. Um, so you guys will see that like once I start going, you get, to get your full report. Um, so that's kind of how that works. Um, so cameras, if you want to hit your stop buttons, we're going to go up around the corner. For them to go, and we'll get closer once they leave. But we can start with our footage just kind of like try to. You can sweep it back and forth. You also have that zoom on there. Don't forget about that. Um, but yeah, let's get those cameras running. Turn those spirit boxes up, and the shit you can actually definitely get that thing going. Again, when they cross the street, they'll be looking at us funny. Who cares? Yeah, mm -hmm. I would say go right up there so you can get your lens in between the cars. So that way it's not the cars. Mm -hmm. I'm curious on yours. The more still you hold yours, Meg, is because. Um, in the event that we do capture something, it's not mm -hmm. from your movement. So if it shows up and we get a hello out of it. I like the little three dots you had over that window right there. That's pretty cool. I love how it's trying to refocus too. Like that's a good sign. Oh really? It means it's trying to like figure out the depth of the location. Mm. are like all gonna have jobs with me later. What do we got going on with these spirit boxes? Anything? You got anything going on with yours? Nothing yet? It's okay, you can just have Tourette's syndrome when you do get something. How's the word list coming? Anything weird? Could be relevant to um, Anne Bonnie's first husband. I would need another clue. His name oh. is James Bonnie. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll, if something else pops up with it, I'll highlight it for you in your notes, but otherwise it'll just be in there. It's just a okay. But yeah, I would need something along those like first and husband, so that way I have James' first husband. That's kind of a, a phrase. How's your weirdness coming? Um, I expect zeros out of here. So again, um, just so you know, natural EMF is 1.1. That's why we always jump to 2.5. Um, so that way we know that there's no real deal there. So there's no electrical lines underneath our feet here. Um, because obviously the only thing we should have is like, when we get closer to that hole, you might get like a 2 to a 5, maybe a 6. Um, that's why we go to a 8 in the alleyway. Um, but again, once we get up there closer, I should still expect to see zeros. So when we do get something, it's exciting. It's not the Pinkney Mansion. I got 4.71. Here, so you had a 4.7, so that's very exciting to me. This is me excited, everybody, just so you know. We, we shouldn't be getting anything over here. Um, so again, you shouldn't, especially like this far away from that lamppost, um, those other two kind of like pointing directly at us, like because we are in between them, Caddy Corner, we should have been getting a little bit. That's why I usually get that like 6 to 7 every once in a while, but a 4.7 over here, I'm excited. It's not the Pinkney Mansion. It's not going to be those high 37s and 31s. It was weird when we were sitting back there, we wouldn't get much, but when you were talking about Put it behind us mm -hmm. and it would bump up just a little bit, then it'd go back down to So, weird. back down to zeros is definitely not coming from a man made object. Well, and that's what was weird. It was like when I put it back there, something went on. Mm -hmm. And they did it three times. That's all I thought. 
I don't remember what it spiked up, but it's Even, not real high. So but. let's say his 4.7 was coming from that lamppost. 4.9. How much? 4.9. So it would hover, go to like 4.9, and then down to like maybe 3.8, but it would still hover within the same kind of vicinity. Mm -hmm. You know, he's getting like a 4.9 down to zero. You know, same way you had that 30 down to zero. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what we want. If it was a man-made um, object, it would hover. <laughs> That was weird. What'd you get? What was that? It almost sounded like a gunshot. You're hearing a lot of sounds out of there. I heard witch. Witch? Witch. Not witches, Sally. That's pretty tall, unless yeah, they're really close. Figured. So it might just be picking up on the tree. Can you raise your right hand if you're any kind of spirit that we're not supposed to be seeing right now? Raise your right hand for us. Remember, it's going to be this side. That was that was weird. Raise your right hand, not your left hand. Maybe the person is looking in the other direction. They might be faced like away from us. Yeah. <laughs> it's still pretty uh like i'm not seeing any other different movement in the body shape mm -hmm. and look at how the waist is like sitting right on top of where those ivy leaves are off in the background on top of the wall yeah so i'm not going to debunk it just yet until i look at it frame by frame mm -hmm. um, but maybe move down like maybe two or three bars to see if we get the same figure oh sorry Yep, same figure. How's the thermal coming? Anything coming up on there? Anything weird? No. Did you figure out how to use the spotlight? I kind of get it focused, like pulling on this guy a little bit. All the cliches are coming out. Getting getting more? There we go. This is for you. Oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> you getting that same figure even at that different angle? Not really. <laughs> All right. You guys are comparing notes. What do you got going on? It's cherry pick. And Elena, what are you getting out of yours? Um, I have a couple like numbers, but okay. tomorrow night was the first one. Five, five hundred miles. Um, forty. November ninth, Waterfront Park. Tell your doctor right away. Veterans Day. Warriors. 7 p.m. Friday. Second seven. And then four October four. Injured in an accident. October fourth, right? Mm -hmm. That was on those gravestones. Yeah, it was like four October and then four. Okay. Um, injured in an accident in Bali. It's just not a common thing for the time for very interesting piece. What else we got going on? Anything else goofy? How's our timer look on yours, Meg? What's it look like out of your camera? Oops. Uh, 2.1. Take a little guy like that. Uh, so what do you got on there? About nine, ten minutes? Have we been here that long? I'm not going to lie. I started two minutes late. Oh. So we're okay. realistically at nine as of in four seconds. <laughs> Nothing weird out of yours? Okay. 
Um, the only reason I'm going to end this now so we can go back down is because we're picking up things from the story I didn't want to tell you. So I'm going to take you back down to where we started and swapped out the light and tell you that story so that way you guys can kind of see why we're getting these weird things. Did you, did you get anything? I got cash. Cash. Yeah, I'm not going to write that one down. I know that one's it's too common. We get cash all the time. Um, so I do like the little EMF readings that we did get. We did get a 4.7, a 4.9, and a 2.1. So those are actually big numbers for this location. Um, so let's go ahead and hit stop on those cameras. And hear me, the code word is purple. Young. It's not a word you would commonly hear on the radio, so that's why it's his code word. That way we know he's here. But Henry, back to you. Five hundred thousand. Henry, let's talk about your wife. Can you tell us how you met your wife? How did you meet how did you meet Katie? Years. 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 Years.
take me to his country? Yeah, <laughs> October, he said. Feel. Okay, Mark, we'll get back to you. If you want to tell us about if you can find the frequency to tell us what sound we're hearing, we'll take it later. We'll, Interesting. We'll take it back to you. Talk about you 43. What did you do for a living? Tell us about the format of things that you did as well, so understand. Art. Just an average man. Doing what? There he is. Just an average man doing what? You are growing discovery. And when I begin. Don't forget the blue box, I'm going to need that as well. No. Okay, so we'll stick to this. Keep us listening and you channeling through the young ladies that are here. We are living mountains in the field. Mountains in the field, does that match up? I it was a warning, warning, you should not. Yes. Close stuff happening right now. Henry, we're going to be You're the only one uh, the nature of the Four to five minutes left, Henry. Yes. Okay, so some of the questions that I've asked you, trying to verify that you're here. You haven't given us a whole lot other than I am the tiger. tiger. Who's watching me next? Who is watching you, Henry? Did somebody else come here to talk about you? Four. 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 Just them. Kick in my face. Did you have a beer? My story. Mm -hmm. Applause. It's been a second. Watching. Watching, watching. Henry, what kind of <laughs> facial hair did you have? Did you have a beard? Did you have a mustache? Sideburns? In the book of John. Okay, that's Significant good. compensation. <laughs> Henry, if you want us to leave, just say the word home. We'll wrap it up. But I would appreciate one more image. Wes Anderson. Giving us much to Mortal. <laughs> Trying to. Yeah, he's not always happy in here. And one last thing. We'll wrap it up or the word home. 5391. Jay Jackson. Gonna give me. At the plate, but. Switching to progressive.com. <laughs> <laughs> we are the champions. Going twice, Henry. Moving too fast. I know it's never enough time, but it's going to be disorienting for us, Henry, to try to talk to you this way. Whoever.
never drinks the water. Alright, let's get the lady cups out. Just go ahead and take that off your face. So I don't want to. Do. Get them cups on the leg. Take them back. <laughs> so I'll take your device. Uh, so nobody get up. <laughs> the ladies that were listening, how do you feel? Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. I'm a but that was because she tapped me. Okay. <laughs> I told you. I had you. to figure out which one it was. I Maybe. told you. Next to your volume, you have a button. And if you flip the button in an opposite direction, it'll turn the machine off. So that way we know that the last time the machine will make. Um, so we're going to take a look at these images. Uh, and then we're going to kind of make a quick assessment on what actually happened here. Again, four images are in the world. Did he say Book of John while ago? He did. What was that? As soon as she said that, I said, Wait, what? Said what? That's what's on my pad. I just went through. It was just a oh. had a weird little setup. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure the direct answer, and you guys all saw that. Um, we can stop the camera by okay. a second. 